Hi, I'm Bart Hansen, the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific Time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the phone number in the description. So, uh, my name's Jesse, and I'm calling about a 2-5 hand uh, that I played at MGM. MGM in Washington? That would be the one. Okay. Okay, so we are 800 effective. Mm -hmm. I cover the villain, who is a, say, mid-30s, I would call him a serious recreational player. Okay. Uh, I definitely get the impression that he would like to make money. And I thought he was competent, but, you know, we'll see if that judgment continues through the end of this hand. Okay. Um, so he, he opens from early position uh, to 25, uh, UTG or UTG plus one. Um, it folds around to me, and I have pocket aces in the cutoff, and I three bet to 75. Um, I think that that, not much to say there. I think that's a reasonable sizing to try to keep most of his range in, because obviously I want to play this for more than $75. Let me ask you, um, let me ask you a quick question. Is that is that the standard open, 5X, just 5X over no – I mean, it just – I would say the standard cold. I would say the standard cold open is twenty to twenty five. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So the, that's a pretty large open. I mean, standard open. Yeah. I was what I was going to say is is that like for example, let's say that you're a hundred big blinds deep here. It goes twenty, and then you let's say we're just trying to figure out a three bet sizing pre flop, and uh, yep. whatever you're eight hundred effective, but let's say that you start five hundred and the guy opens it to twenty five. I mean. You can see that you can actually make it smaller and smaller because I think that raising it to 3x will fold out some hands. I mean, he's getting about 2 to 1, and aces is mm -hmm. such a good hand. There's, It's got such value. I want to keep the hands in. So then you have to look at, all right, well, how deep is my stack size? Um, you know, if you start 500 effective, like you could make this 60, and now all of a sudden you can easily get the money in with like two-third pot size bets. And then you, now you yeah. you definitely make sure that the guy calls. Obviously, I have no problem with it here, 75. And people will tell you that you should never, ever change your sizing according to what your hand is uh, in terms of, like, again, we'll go to that whole thing about in terms of, ex, you know, being balanced and exploitative play. I think that that's hogwash. I think that you should never say never. And uh, I will certainly change my preflop raise sizing as an open and or three bet sizing according to the situation. And a lot of that has to do with my own hand. Not always what it is. It has to do with the player. It has to do with stack sizes. Um, but to always have a three bet sizing, that's always going to be a certain amount I think is, is not right. But anyway, so you make it 75. Yeah, I make it 75 mm -hmm. uh, and we go heads up to the flop. Okay. Now, before we get to the flop, I just want to note that he likes, it, there was a he tanked for a relatively long period of time before calling, and at least the way that I understood that and the way I generally read that is that he has a decision to make, meaning that I feel like he's near either the bottom or the top part of his opening range because he's either thinking about again, assuming that he's not making moves, he's either thinking about folding or thinking about four betting. So I'm inclined to think that he's either got a marginal holding or a monster holding. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know if I would think that deep. No, you got to be really spot on. I mean, I believe in live reads, but also too like. Oh, yeah. no, 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 I'm just saying it, it tends to skew slightly. That's all. Okay. All I right. So you go to. So, so we go to the flop. Yes, the flop rolls off ace, queen, three, rainbow. Ace, queen, three, rainbow. All right. I'm gonna put ace of spades, queen of diamonds, three of clubs, just for our graphic guy's sanity. So you flop top set. I flop top set. Okay. And he very quickly leaves 100 at me. So that's very odd. So UTG exactly. leads for 100. Um, and now obviously your decision here is, well, what is he leading? I mean, the first thing that I would, that would jump out at me is, okay, what does this guy have, right? Mm -hmm. So what did I mean? What did you think that he had? I mean, I usually assume that on a relatively dry board like this, I mean, there are some potential straight draws. There's no flush. That he 
is most likely uh, leading with a relatively strong hand. Like maybe he's got ace queen or ace king, trying mm-hmm. to figure out where he's at. Mm-hmm. Maybe even threes or queens if he's good enough to fast play a real monster. I yeah, I, it's, difficult. I mean, it's difficult for me to see any draw he'd be leading with first. Right, and 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 I think this is going to be a function of stack depth. I mean, if say for example you started a hundred big blinds deep, then I, I would probably flat almost always here. When you start eight hundred mm-hmm. deep, I'm just doing some quick math here. So this kind of brings it back to some of the stuff I've talked about the last six months. So let's say you call. So the pot's three fifty, and he's got. I mean, that's what everyone's probably initial thing what their initial reaction is okay we're we're gonna call here right the guy's either bluffing or he doesn't have anything really all that strong although i do find it very peculiar because when you start to think about somebody's opening under the gun or under the gun one range and then calling a three bet what what bluffs are they betting out here with like they're gonna all of a sudden call with pocket tens and then bet out here on an ace queen three board you know what i mean so it's sort of bizarre in that in that manner it'd be one thing if you three bet a guy with pocket sevens and the board came out you know, seven deuce three, and a guy bet out at you in a three bet pot. He just thought like you missed, and he missed too, so he's betting. Right. But what is he betting here? You know what I mean? Like this hits your range like quite a bit. So yeah, which is yeah. I, I, you know, it. So I, I mean, I'm sort of just trying to do the the math on this. Like, I would say that if you flat, the pot's going to be about three fifty, and he has like. 625 left so if you check and you bet 200 i don't know if you can get all the money in so my first reaction is i can go either way with it i I could make it 250 here or i could flat and the deeper that i am the more i would make it 250 and people would be like oh well how can how can you do that because like you know what bluffs do you have it doesn't matter it doesn't matter the guy's going to probably have something, and if he doesn't have something and you call, he's not going to continue to bluff. I mean, that's that's how I feel about it. So he leads for 100. What, do you, what did you end up doing? So I ended up calling, I think, I, I mean, I agree the point about the stack depth, and obviously this is a hand that I'm going to try to get, if at all possible, all yeah. the money in the middle. I yep. just It was so perplexing. I right. really didn't know what to do. So I was like, I'm going to call and just see what he does. Obviously, I position so I don't risk losing a betting round. If he checks to me, I can just lead into him on the turn, and mm-hmm. it'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so I call, and the turn rolls off a uh, an off a uh, jack completing the badoogie. Okay. And he leads for pot. So he leads now for 350? For 350. Well, he doesn't have that much left, right? Yeah, so, I mean, he's got about... I would say that he started the turn with 650, so he put in like more than half of his stack uh-huh. on the turn with that bet. I mean, I guess you could so go. I feel like there are only two options at this point. Well, of course there are only two options. What would the third option be? <laughs> <laughs> to fold? I don't know to fold. Oh no, yeah, I could no. never see folding. Um, I would. But I, I sort of meant that I, I didn't really think that calling just seemed like such a bizarre thing to do at this point because like. And then, well, then what am I going to do? Fold if he bets again, or no, just wh- hope that he runs some crazy three street bluff? Or usually, when somebody like goes that hard at the board, I would probably just get it in. I, I mean, I, I would appreciate. I mean, I understand that people say that. Again, it's just a situation where if you call again, what is a bluffing frequency going to be, and what can he have? It's a three bet pot. You know what I'm saying? What is he bluffing with at the end? So, I mean, it, it's you could probably go either way with it. You could pro, you, you know, you could call again. You could move all in. It's probably pretty close. Uh, you know, obviously we're never folding. The bad thing here is, is that if some card comes off that brings a one liner and the guy check folds, but if he has what he's trying to represent, which is like Ace Queen Plus, I don't even know if he's gonna. I mean, if he's got Ace Queen Plus here, the real killer card for you would be like a King. On the river, right. That brings a one liner to. That brings a one liner, and then he loses right, yeah. to Ace King. Um, right. So in a lot of these spots, I just sort of get it in here. Now the way that, like I said, the way that you should think about it is, is that what is, what are the chances? How many action killing cards are there at the end? And then also, you know, what are the chances if he's bluffing that he's going to continue to bluff? But I just can't really even invent a hand that this guy's bluffing with here because it's a UTG three bet pot. Right, 
So what is he right. bluffing with? Five it's six suited. To... Five six suited that he just decides to bluff with, and now he's going to just bluff all three streets after you call three fifty on the turn. Do you see what I'm saying? Like that's why it's like there is no, there really is no bluff that's coming on the river. So exactly. if there's no bluff that's coming on the river, if we move in on the turn, are we folding out some hands that would call the river? I don't think so. So that's why he can't really be can't really go all that wrong by just moving in here um, on the turn. But since the board is so sort of unscary, I guess you probably can't go that wrong by just calling either. Um, if I think that there is an appearance of a front door flusher, I would absolutely move all in uh, or any right. type of connected coordinated thing. This is sort of unique. So what did you end up doing? Well, uh, for the reasons that you indicated, I mean, I feel like when he pots like that, he's just never going to fold, or it's extremely unlikely unless he's got a crazy air ball bluff that he's going to fold. Mm -hmm. So I just shipped it, mm -hmm. um, and he snap called, uh, and he tabled king ten. Oh, I mean, that is what it is. I mean, I just yeah, I, I just hope a bizarre. I man. hope you don't think about this in terms of like it being a bad beat. Just okay, what am I going to do? And again, it's just a situation where. It's a losing way to think about it. When you look at losing poker players, losing recreational players, okay, the way that they'll analyze this hand, they'll say, oh, you should have raised the flop because you let King-10 get there. And, of course, that's not the way that you look at it. You look at what is this guy's range, and did I play the hand according to what I thought his range was correctly? Um Obviously, if you made it 250 with some frequency like I would and he moved all in on the flop, of course you're going to snap call. I mean, well, he's not going to move all in the flop because he's got king 10. But, okay, so he folds. You know, big deal. How, Like I said, how often is somebody leading here for 100 as a bluff and will follow up with the turn? That's the key. So you called the flop. He has king 10. Now, let's say the turn is a deuce. Do you really think he's going to bet again on the turn? And and that's the only reason why calling would be um, would be a little bit more EV than raising in that spot against that hand is because you make an extra bet on the turn, whereas if you raise, right. the guy would fold out. But I just don't believe that when a guy bets 100 into the flop that he's going to fire again when that board smacks your three betting range, if you follow me. So that's how I would think yeah, yeah, about no, it. Yeah, I do. All right, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hey, guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button, and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA100. Click on the link right there.